These two plaques turned out absolutely perfect. Again, I have that nice jet black engraving left over and there's not a scan line out of place whether I use the XCS software or the Lightburn software. Welcome back. My name is Greg and thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. To produce the jet black results on this aluminum using this Xtool D1 Pro, I'm going to show you how to do this using the Xtool software XCS. And if XCS is not your cup of tea, I'll also be showing you how to do this in Lightburn software. By the end of this video, you'll be able to produce these same great results. The method that I'm using has a wide operational window for the settings and the results are very consistent. When I developed this technique, I remembered something that my father told me a long time ago, and that was, Greg, work smarter, not harder. It's very difficult to get engraving, black engraving on aluminum. So I started out with aluminum that is already black. This is a placard from an award or trophy place. These are relatively inexpensive, and most of all, the coating that is on here is extremely durable. It's jet black, and you can do this both on aluminum or brass. In order for the text to show up, I'm going to be using a method called reverse engraving. And just as the name will imply, we're going to engrave everything but the text that we want left behind. Let's get this first engraving started using the Xtool Creative Space software. The first thing I'm going to do in the software is I'm going to draw an engraving box and that box is going to be a little bit larger than my engraving plaque. I'm going to add two millimeters to both the height and the width just as a safety measure. When we take a look in the software here, we'll see that I've already got my rectangle again, slightly larger than my engraving plaque, and I have my text above it. And this is going to be the text that we want to remain after we're done with the engraving. Right now, if I take this and I put it inside of this engraving box and we go over here to process to take a look at the preview, uh, we'll see that we have just this black card. Everything that is black is going to be engraved and that of course will result in nothing but an aluminum card. How do we get the text to show up? Let's back up one step here and I'm going to select everything here and I'm going to use this combine feature up here where it is going to subtract everything that is overlapping. In our case here, just the text is overlapping the rectangular box. And when I click on that, all of a sudden our text pops through. When I go back down here to process to take a look at the preview, we'll see that in fact, the white that comes through will not be engraved and that will be left as black on this card. And this is the secret of how to get these engraved cards showing up very consistent and of course, jet black every single time. Let's take a look at the settings that I'll be using for this engraving. And I'm going to use an engraving power of 50% and a speed of 150 millimeters per second. The machine that I'm using has a 20 watt laser module on it. So I'm using these settings. So if you've got a laser machine using a 10 watt a laser module on it, you can still go 150 millimeters per second and just double the power that you have to 100%. The lines per centimeter, I'm gonna bump that up to 200. And the last thing I need to do is set the focus and then position the laser on this project. The laser machine I'm using today is the Xtool D1 Pro, and that has a cut of depth gauge on the side here. And we're not doing any cutting today, we're engraving. So I'm going to leave this setting at zero. Next, I can place the work material down, flip the focusing lever out, and set the focus. Oh, that looks good. This method of engraving these cards doesn't require the laser module to be absolutely perfectly focused. 
One thing that does have to be absolutely perfect, and that is the alignment of this plaque to the frame of the machine. And for this, I like to use something that is straight and flat. I'll place that up against the frame of the machine and I'll just slide that down until it hits the surface here. And then I can place my placard that has double-sided tape on the back and I'll just push this forward until it is flat against this backstop. And now I know that my work material is perfectly square against the frame of the machine. I'm just going to position the laser module so it's just outside of the work material. That looks good. And I'm now ready to hit the start button. That only took a minute or two and I'll move the laser module all the way and I'll just give this a light wipe with uh, some denatured alcohol to remove any residual residue that's left over, but there's none and we'll pick this up and take a look at it for the first time. Check that out, looks absolutely stunning. Awesome results using the Xtool Creative Space software that was quick and easy. And most of all, the settings on here are very, very forgiving. Next up, we're gonna try the same thing using Lightburn software. We're gonna do the same principles as before, setting the focus and getting the placard, if I can get it off the machine here, uh, perfectly aligned up to the machine. In the Lightburn software, we're gonna be following the same principles as we did in the Xtool software. And again, that's going to be drawing this box that is a little bit larger than the plaque material, and then writing whatever text that we would like. This time when I select the text and I move it to the center of the material here, and I click on the preview button, we'll see that in the Lightburn software, when I have an object and some text overlapping, if it's drawn within the Lightburn software, it will automatically know that it doesn't wanna engrave everything and it will automatically subtract out one from the other. And I played around with this and it doesn't seem to matter if I write the text first or draw the box second or vice versa. When I place the two on top of each other, it always lets the, uh, the text come through as not engraving. So this is already set up for reverse engraving for us. This looks good. And I'm going to run the same settings that I did before, 150 millimeters per second at 50% power. My scans per uh, inch are going to be at 300 and just one pass is needed. I've already got my plaque aligned to the machine. Focus was set from the previous project and I'm just ready to turn the air assist head on and connect my exhaust system and hit the start button. Here's the first plaque that I made, and then here's the one that just came off the laser machine. And when we take a look at those side by side, other than the font is ever so slightly different, we get the same consistent results. These two plaques turned out absolutely perfect. Again, I have that nice jet black engraving left over, and there's not a scan line out of place whether I use the XCS software or the Lightburn software. If you enjoyed this video, show it some love by giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Thanks for joining me in this video. Until next time, learn, create, and share.